Hello everyone, hopefully you're doing pretty well today. My name is Deborah. and welcome to my channel, Crafty Talking Creations. Today I'm going to be doing a project. It, it can be a solicitor, it could be for a tear tray, it could be, you could hang it on your wall. It's one of the, I bought these from Michael's, they're their 5x5 five five box frames. They have little saw teeth on the back. If you want to just cut this off and hang it on the wall or tape this down and hang it on the wall if you would like to or if you want to use the jute cording and hang it that way. I absolutely love these. Um, I thought they would be absolutely adorable for this project that I'm about to do. Now at the end of the video, I will have a uh, another video showing how I prepared the surface, but this is what I'm gonna be making. Now these two I've already done. I did the videos of these. You can find these in my Facebook group, but I've done these. And I thought it was a perfect complement to April's Club. Now today, April 30th, this last day, you can sign up and get this transfer. This is exclusively for Chalk Couture uh, designers as well as Club Couture subscribers. But um, even if you don't sign up and get this in time, you can still get to this project if you would like to. Add a little farm charm to your home. Now the transfer I'm going to be using is this one here as you can see I've used this this is like their little shiplap this is called from the farm cutouts and it complements their farmhouse slim cuts which is what I will be using and that is what I use for these these two right here so I'm gonna be the one I have left to do is the milk can and like I said I've already prepped the surface it's already been waxed so it should be pretty easy peasy to do for this part of the video. A lot of the work was prepping for the box. So what I need to do, I'm going to, oh, the colors I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using black velvet for the shiplap. Now I was originally going to use bright white because I'm going to put milk and cream on the jug because I want to do the silhouette, but I decided I'm going to go with the dune. I think it would go a better complement to the background versus the bright white. That's just my preference. You can do whatever you want, whatever colors you want to do. So, and I, you also need some surface wax. Now, if you don't have a fuzzing cloth, you can just go ahead and um, use a towel, you know, sweatshirt, t-shirt, something that is going to take a little bit of stickiness off. Now, this is, I believe, the third time. Yes, this will be the third time I've used this, so I'm not going to need to fuzz it too terribly much, but it's still pretty sticky. Now I scored my transfer, <clears throat> excuse me, if you see these lines here, you can cut it apart if you'd like to, but I like to score mine, that way I have it all on one sheet. Now you want to keep that and set that aside because you're going to want it for storage. So you just need to fuzz this, you know, two or three, maybe four times. If it's your first time using it, you're going to want to fuzz it several more, even though you've waxed your surface. Now why you need to wax your surface, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm congested today, is... Um, it's freshly painted. You don't want to possibly run your transfer and pull some paint up on there. And it, um, it protects your surface from your transfer pulling up the paint. It's kind of like a two for thing. Now, if you notice, this does not fit straight on there. You're going to have to tuck it in. The only thing you'll need to watch out for is to make sure that your lines are as straight as possible. That's pretty much it. Where's that center one I'm looking for? All right. That looks pretty straight. I would like this a little bit higher. Now you could go... Um, vertical also if you want to do it that way but these two I've already got going horizontal so I'm going to stick with the horizontal so that way it is all cohesive as a set but you have that as an option also if you want to do that so you just kind of tuck it in there see if it's where you want it to be if it looks fairly straight I think it looks fairly straight Hold on, let me sit down and have a look at that. That might be a hair off. 
It might be just a hair cricket. Okay. And then you just smooth it in there. If you want, you can take your squeegee and just smooth it in there. Now you'll need to be a little bit careful on the edges when you put your paste in there because it might go up on the inside, but you can just wipe it. You might need to touch up the inside again if you get any paste on there because it does have texture inside these boxes. I didn't sand all that. All right. And that way I, I think that looks pretty good. All I need to do is go into my black velvet paste. And you just generously apply it like you do the other transfers. You just want to make sure you have good coverage and you can always scrape off the excess. Now, as you can see, some of the paste colors, like black for example, can stain your transfer. There is nothing wrong with your transfer. You just want to make sure that you do not have your paste dry in the silk screen. Got that covered, I'm going to scrape off the excess. Now I will have an editable shopping cart link if you'd like to get this transfer and the slim cuts. That way you can do your own project. They do, uh, Chocolate Tour does have 5x5 five five, uh, double sided box frames. If you'd like to add those to your cart, you can do that. And I will have a paste packet of the black velvet and the bright white if you would like to use that. Like I said, that shopping cart is editable, so you can use whatever colors, add, subtract, whatever you'd like to do. All right, now that I have that on there and I've wiped off the excess, it's time for the peel and reveal. Now you just slowly lift up. That way if you might have missed a spot, you can just lay it back down and touch it up. But I think it looks pretty good. I do, I like that. Now I have an extra towel here. I'm just gonna lay this down, sticky side down. But as soon as you're done, you should take it to the sink and uh, wash it with either a magic eraser or board eraser on a uh, non-sticky side with just water. And uh, make sure that you don't have your paste drying in there. All right. Now, what I need to do is I need to dry this. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry this. You can set that aside, but I wanna make sure it's good and dried because I'm gonna be painting this a matte black. And I just wanna make sure this is good and dry because once um, it's dry and I have this painted, I'm going to apply another coat of surface wax over this to protect that paste. Feels like it's good and dry. Now, what I'm going to do is paint. Now, these are pre painted. You can leave it white if you want to. And then, with this transfer, if you want to do another color over it, maybe like storm gray or something, you could do that. But I'm going to, I want to do the silhouette type look. I was debating if I wanted to do the words on there. I'm still kind of debating, but I think I will. I'll know more once I get this painted. All right, now what I'm using is the Apple Barrel Acrylic Black Paint. It dries in a matte finish like this. I like how that turns out. So that's what I am using. So if you want to do that, you can use whatever colors you want. You can use the chalk paste. Uh, if you want to do that, that's totally up to you. So all I'm going to do is just squirt some. my plate here and I will take two coats 
I'm trying to decide if, if there's, this one feels a little more curved, so I'll just do this side. But it will take two coats. And I get the edges also. Now, I don't paint the back, because this is going to be adhered to, to the surface, so I don't paint it. But uh, you can do that if you want to, depending on what your project's going to look like. But if you're wanting to do, uh, replicate this, you don't need to paint the back. I just get the sides and the front. Now, the sides only need one coat. The front needs two coats. These are their slim cuts, and I just got paint. I mean, if your your piece is moving around like mine is, you can always tape it down on the back side. You know, we'll, you know, make a little loop of t uh, tape and tape it down. Okay, set that there. The way the light's hitting this, it looks like there's a bead of paint at the top and. I want to try to get this as smooth as possible. All right. Now, use my little drying tool here. I'm going to dry this so I can get the edges. At any point you enjoyed this this video, you like this project, or just the idea if it gives you some inspiration for another project that you may have in mind, or you weren't sure what you were going to do with it, and this helped inspire you, I would appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up. That you like it. It helps me with YouTube algorithm, and also, if you'd like to see more videos that I post, then... Um, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click that little notification bell. That way YouTube notifies you of whenever I post another video. All right, now I'm going to do is get along the edges. Hopefully you can see that. These are, I think, are like an eighth of an inch thick. I like this this project. I like how those frames turn out. Like I said, at the end of this video, if you want to see how I made the box, little box frame, you can watch that. I um, I used the chalk paint and acrylic paint and surface wax and some distressing. Now you, it does take a little time to make one of those boxes that way. So if you're wanting something like really quick, like a 10 minute project, that's not for you. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, it could take 20, 20 plus minutes to do, to do a box. Well, I'm doing it individually. I'm sure if you do it assembly line, it'd take a little bit, be a little bit quicker. But uh, just thought I would let you know. But I like the look of the chalk paint with the, the wax. All right, I'm gonna lay that back down. I'm gonna get my my little drying tool here. My allergies are bothering me today. We've had a lot of rain here lately, and I have a high allergy to mold. I'll tell ya. So sorry if you hear me sniffling here. Not much I can do about that at the moment. So I'm just making sure that this is dry. Oh my goodness, this thing gets hot. This is like an embossing. Uh, you can, you know, heat things for embossing. And it gets hot. So you use this. Use caution. All right. That looks like it is dry. So I'm going to do the second coat. For a second there, I thought it wasn't the way it felt. So I'm just going to put a second coat back on here. Right. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and try it again. Now if you wanted to sand this and distress this a little bit, you could. Um, some of the white might show up underneath, so you might, might want to put a different uh, color underneath. That's totally up to you. But I like it with the silhouette. Alright, that looks like it's good and dry. I'm going to set that aside, so what we need to do now is wax the inside of this. That way it protects the, uh, the paste that is in there. It seals it. Now, once I get that done, okay, you can just use a towel if you would like. You know, they do have a wax applicator, but I'm just going to use my, my old little towel here. Or you can use some paper towel, but cotton cloth is much better. And you just apply your wax over your paste. You have to go in there a couple of times. You don't have to worry about getting the sides or anything. Nothing's on there. That needs to be sealed. This is an acrylic paint I'm putting this over. And the paste. Alright, now that I have that on there, I just need to find a spot that does not have any wax. And then you just buff it. That's why you want to make sure it's good and dry. And you just want to buff it. Now, how you know if you've buffed it well enough, and or enough I should say, is when you touch it, it should feel smooth. If you feel a little bit of stickiness or tact, um, you need to buff some more. So this could take a couple of minutes or less. And it will leave a sheen and it does protect your paste. I mean, you could spray it if you want to, you know, with a... Uh, a sealer like from Krylon or rust -Oleum. if you want a gloss or if you want a matte it's totally up to you but I prefer to use the wax as much as possible I just like the look of it it's just a personal preference okay I need a little bit more here all right that feels pretty good now you've got a few options here once you have this done if you want it to be a little bit more elevated, if you have like a little piece of dowel or you have like a, one of those like little wood squares they sell at the Dollar Tree, and you want to hot glue it in there, you could do that. That way it kind of gives it a raised effect and would give you some dimension. That's one option. Another option is you can just lay it flat like that and you can hot glue it. If you want it to be permanent and hot glue it, you could do that. If you want another option is if you want to be able to remove this, do the Velcro dots, you know, the little sticky Velcro dots and put one on it, you know, on here on the inside and adhere it. That way, if you want to change out, you like your background, you like your frame and you want to change out, let's say come in the autumn, maybe they have leaf shapes or something and you would like to put those in there instead, then you could do that. I do not have any of those glue dots. I mean, uh, not the glue dots, those Velcro dots. I have glue dots. These are the removable glue dots. I'm going to hold that up there if you want to take a look and some notes. I got these at Michael's and that's what I used on these. So that way if I want to pull this off, and it, they do stick on there pretty good, but it is removable. See? Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. They are removable. So if you want to remove it, you could. I just need to place that back on there. I just wanted to show you it is they are removable. Let me just press it back down. And there you go. So that's what I'm going to be using on, on this on the back of, of this. I'm going to be using the glue dots. I'm only going to use two. You could use more if you want to. Fairly easy. It's hard to see them on this paper. But I'm going to put one up here and one down here. Now when you apply these, you need to rub them with your finger a little bit to help, I guess, create some friction and warm it up a little bit so that way you can peel the paper off a little bit better and it leaves your glue dot. Can you see that? Oh, there we go.
and the glue dots. Then all you need to do is kind of position where you want it. And do, do it like that. But that's if you want the silhouette. I'm going to put my little sticky papers back on because I want to add the milk and cream to the front. I told you earlier I was undecided if I wanted to do that or not. Oops, okay. And I think I will. And if I don't like it, I can always paint over it. That's, that's how I feel about it. But I am going to need to fuzz the daylights out of this. Fuzz the fiddle out of it is what I say. Because I do not want to apply any wax to that. It is a freshly painted surface, so you should apply wax. But I don't want to. I want to keep the matte look. So I'm going to have to fuzz several, 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 several times. I don't know. I might leave it plain. That's where I told you I was undecided. No, I want the milk. Because some people might look at that and go, what is that? <laughs> so I'll just do milk and cream. I was going to originally bright white, but I think that is going to be too bright of a contrast. So I'm going to use Dune. I'm going to use the color Dune. It's kind of like a light uh, yellow beige. These are pretty sticky. All right, but that is an option. Okay. I'm not doing the farm fresh part. I'm just doing the milk and cream. So I'm going to gently lay that down. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, that's good. And I'm not going to do the little the little leaf sprigs. I'm not going to do those either. I just want to do the milk and cream. At least that's that's my goal here. We'll see how this this works with my I probably should use my detail tool. You know what? Instead of using not my detail, my multi tool. Instead of using a mini squeegee, I'm going to use my multi-tool because it's got a smaller squeegee on the end. I think that would be better suited, especially if I don't want to get the rest of this. I've got paint all over me. That's Dune. It looks a little, a little washed out here because i got the flash on. Maybe if I hold it down here. Yeah, there we go. I think that goes better with that cream color versus the bright white. I think the white would be a little too much. But that's just me. You, like I said, this is just for inspiration and ideas for you. You can do this whatever colors you choose to do. Okay, I think I've got it all. I'm just going to scrape off this excess here and try not to get it on the rest because I really don't want that. All right. I like that. I think that is cute. I like it with the milk and cream. Very simple. I don't want all the detail because I've got the busyness with the lines. All right, I need to spritz that down with some water. I'm gonna go through and dry this. Then I'm going to attach it inside my little box. Got a little piece of wax in there. All right. That's dry. That should be warm enough. I'm gonna peel my little my little tabs off the back of my glue dots there. Now I'm going to line this up. Kind of eyeball it here. I think 
that looks pretty good. Bring it down just a little bit. And then just press in place. And that is it. Now I've got my entire set here. How cute are these? It is a bit of a labor of love, but I think they are absolutely adorable. You could hang these up on a wall in the sets of three like that. Yeah, that's out, zoomed out as far as I would go. You could use these as sill sitters. You know, put them up on you know a windowsill or on your shelf. Use it in your tear tray. These are five by five. You could do it like that also. I think that is absolutely cute. I love these. I absolutely love these. I hope you like this project. And like I said, I give you some inspiration ideas. I will have an editable shopping cart link if you'd like to get this transfer. And also the slim cuts. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. And stay tuned for the box project. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate to you how I painted the 5x5 five five wood frame box I purchased from Michaels. But before I do that, I need to go over the materials and supplies that you're going to need and also some safety gear that you may want to use. All right, you can use a mask that because you will be sanding. And I'm not sure the ventilation in your area, so you'll want to wear a mask, whether it be something like this. If you want to wear an N95 mask, a respirator, that's totally up to you. But if you want to wear something to protect yourself and your lungs, because you will be sanding and there will be a little bit of paint dust. So be sure to wear a mask for your safety. And also you can wear gloves if you um, are sensitive to maybe some of the paint particles or you don't want to run your manicure or anything like that. Then wear gloves also to protect your hands if you would like to. This does not bother me so I will not be wearing gloves. And also safety glasses or safety goggles. I will be wearing my glasses. And other things that you will need. You'll need a work surface to protect a mat or something like a, a, a something that you want to lay down to protect your countertop or your tabletop surface. All right. You will also need a couple colors of paint if you want to paint it two different colors. Now these are the colors that I used and this is the paint that I used. This is called light buttermilk. This is acrylic. This is a larger bottle. I purchased this off of Amazon. And I also, and this color I used for the inside and around, around the edge there. So that's called light buttermilk. The other color that I use, the chalk paint that I use, is this color. I purchased this from Michaels. And this is what I use for along the edge and the outer portion there. And that's that color. You will also need some surface wax. If you already have some from Chalk Tour, you could do that. Or if you have some of your own, then you are welcome to use that also. You will need a sanding block. This is a sanding sponge. It has various grits. I purchased this off of Amazon. You will also need a tacked cloth. I think they're sold like a package of three or six. I don't remember. But I did purchase these off of Amazon. And this is to remove as much of the dust from when you sand the edges to distress. And that helps pick some of that up. You will also need some various paint brushes. These are some little cheapies uh, that I had gotten from Joann's. There was a whole bunch of them. So I just use these. All right. If you have your own, you're welcome to use those. Whatever you like to use for their paint brushes. Paint, that, paint brushes. You also need a couple of jars or glasses of water here. And you will need some paper towel as well some kind of cotton cloth to uh, buff your wax with. And if you're not going to use the gloves, you might want a moist towel or some disinfectant wipes to wipe your hands with to get some of that dust off your hands. And I believe that is it that I can think of. Now, in regards to materials and supplies, I'm pretty, uh, yeah, I think that pretty much covered it. Now, um, this project, if I don't talk, it takes it takes me about 20 minutes to do from beginning to end. If I talk and explain things, it takes me about 30 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I will fast forward through some of the process. I will tell you the step that I'm going to do. Then I'll fast forward through it until I get to the next step until I'm completed. So that way, if you'd like to replicate this, you can. 
All right, so I'm gonna get started. First thing I need to do is get my surface a little bit cleared off here. Now with my first box, what I did is I painted the inside first. I'm not going to do that because I learned from my lesson because of that when I sand it the outside, it, some of it, um, it smudged the inside of my wood frame. So paint the outside and sand first. So that's what we will be doing. Now on your jar of paint, it does say to stir your paint first. I've already done that. And it's pretty much all you do is you just take your paint, put your brush on there, and you just start painting along the edges. Now, I will fast forward through this portion, but I did want to show you, don't stress and worry about getting right up to the edge because you're going to be sanding that because you want to give it a distressed look. So don't worry about being actually precise because you want that little bit of aged look. And if there's like little dents and dings in your wood like that, it's going to add to the aging and like a weathered effect. So don't worry about it. But if you really, really want to get up to the edge, then use some painter's tape or something along there. But I didn't do that. I just freehand it. That's pretty much how I do things. Oh, another thing you're going to need to speed the process along will be a hair dryer or a heating tool to dry this. That is something else I forgot to mention. I knew there was something else. That's this. This is what I use. This is like an embossing heat tool. It gets pretty hot. So if you have a hair dryer, use a hair dryer. But I got this off of Amazon also if you're looking for that. But it, it's, it's good for embossing. And I, just, I already got paint paint all over me. All right, so I'm going to fast forward through this process, and then when I'm done painting with that, I will show you the process that I use for the sanding. All right. All right, I'm done painting the outside edges. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is good and dry. Now, as you can see along the edge there, I'm just not, because I'm going to be sanding that, so I'm not too worried about it getting, you know, getting full coverage because you're going to be sanding this. Now, if you just wanted to use like a matte black acrylic paint, you can do that. I mean, but I like the look of the wax look with the chalk paint. That's just my preference. And if you like that look also, then this is how I do it. I'm trying to make something that does not look completely like, you know, cookie cutter box store bought, but still give you a professional result. All right, that is good and dry. Set that aside. Now it's time for the sanding. So, don't forget your mask. All right, now I take the coarsest side, and then what I do is I just start sanding. Now you can sand as much as you want or as little as you want, depending on how much distressing you want. And also get the inner edge there. You see what I mean? You're gonna have all that little dust there. That's why you need a tack cloth. Now the corners, I just sand it like that. Depending on how much you want, you can get 
the edges like that. You can distress it however you would like and however much you want. there now if you want to paint the back, back of it you can I'm not but if you're putting this on a tear tray or something that is going to have have the back showing you can paint the back and take the hardware off now I'm sanding the edges here this is why you wanted to put a little cloth I don't know if you can see it or not but you get the little paint dust particles there front okay. and if you think you've taken too much off you can just add a little bit more paint all over my hands. That's why you may want to wear gloves or have a towel on hand to wipe your hands off with. Or just walk to the sink and, and wash your hands. You can do that too and then come back. All right. So I'm going to move this, at least fold it over. Okay. And now you want to take your tacked cloth these are going to be very sticky. I think it's like coated in beeswax or something. I'm not sure what it is coated in. But it's very sticky. And that helps remove some of that dust off of your piece. And you just wipe it on all the edges. And on the inside to try to get some of that out. Now, I have another like softer paintbrush. I don't know if you can see that or not, but in these little nooks and crannies, there's still a few little pieces. I'm gonna open that back up. And you would just kind of want to brush those out. The best that you can. And then I'm going to go back in there with the tack cloth just to try to get as much of that off as I can. Okay. All right. That is that part. Now, the next step that I'm going to do is going to paint the inside. Make sure you give your paint a good, good shake. Now, you can put this on an extra plate if you would like to. I'm just going to squirt it in here. Now I do two coats, second coat you don't need to put as much paint in. And then all I do is just paint the inside. So that's what you do with that, but before I fast forward it, I'm going to show you how you get the inner edge. Instead of going across and possibly getting your paint on your frame there, you take your brush towards the back, go forward. And you'll need to stick, you know, just kind of swoosh your, smoosh your brush in the corners there a little bit. And that's what you do. You just go that direction. And then once you've done that, then you take your brush 
and just kind of smooth it over that way. And then you just do that to all four sides. That way you don't get your paint on the outside of your frame. All right, I'm gonna fast forward this while I paint the inside. And I will then go ahead and use my dryer to dry it and I'll put on the second coat and then I will be back to show you how to wax it. I've done my two coats and it is dry. It's a little warm right now because that heat tool is pretty hot. I'm not sure if I wanna add more black to that or not, but you know what, it's, it adds to its charm. See that? All right. So I'm just gonna set my glasses of water aside. I have my paint in there. All right, I need to give this a chance to cool down a little bit because it's still pretty warm. All right, now, if you have another cloth, you can use that for your surface wax if you want to. Um, the only reason why I'm not doing that because some, when you apply the wax, some of the black paint will come off on your, your towel. So if it's a towel you don't really care about or anything like that, you can use a towel. But what I'm going to do for me, I don't want to completely mess up my towels with all the black paint. I'm going to be using paper towel. But a cotton towel, it definitely applies much better with a cotton towel versus a paper towel. Just so I let you know. Because when I use a paper towel, I seem to get like sheets of this wax coming off. which I don't want that. But anyhow, you go in here with your towel or your paper towel and just load up as much wax as you possibly can. You'll have to do this several times. And then you just start applying it to your edges and your surface. You also want to wax the inside. You don't have to worry about the sides, but you want to wax the flat surface because that's what you're going to put your transfer on. So you may as well just do it all at once before you do your project. Make sure to get your corners, just go across it. Now you can apply as much wax or as little wax as you would like. Because you will need to buff this. Make sure to get your corners and your edges. Add a little bit more. And then we'll get the front here of our frame. Like I said, you don't have to do this. You can just straight up paint acrylic paint, but I like the look of the wax on the paint and the distressing. And I think when you use the chalk paint, it helps you with your distressing better than the acrylic. That's just my, my personal preference, but you can do both. But I just, I like the look of this. To me, it gives it more of an aged look for lack of a better term. 
I don't mean aged as, as in um, like stained or anything like that. I'm, I'm referring to like, it just gives it a different feel and I just like the look of it a lot better. All right, now you see how I've got some of the black on there? I'm just gonna turn this over a little bit so that way I have a clean side. And I'm gonna wax my inside. Now when you buff, you will have a sheen. <clears throat> Excuse me, you will have a sheen. So if you don't want that, then just, just you know, spray it with a matte sealer. Or just use a matte acrylic paint, you can do that too. But this is if you like that kind of antique look and the wax look on, on your surface. All right. Now it's time for the buffing. This is the labor of love part. And this is what's gonna take the time and away. And now how you know if you have buffed enough is if it will feel smooth and you see you'll have some of the shine there. If it's still tacky, then you need to buff some more. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish buffing this. I'm gonna fast forward through this and then we will conclude. That's it. As you can see, it has the sheen on there. Now, if you now that's when I think I, I need to buff it a little bit more, especially along the edges. Sometimes it's a little difficult to get in there, but uh, I do. I like the look of it. A I... there you go, and that's pretty much it. And the inside, as you can see, it's got a little bit of sheen. It is ready for your project. So that way, whenever you want to put a transfer in there or another um, different design or even a little saying, it's ready to go. And I hope you enjoyed watching this. I know it was a bit lengthy, and that's why I fast forward some, through some of this. But to me, the results are well worth it. And there we go. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy this. And that way you can paint your own. 5x5 five five or any box frame. Alright, you have a wonderful day.